young, young men and young women who have tried the Bible to be Bible Christians are persuaded to join the party. And they are drawn into the ring. And they did not prayerfully consult the divine standard to learn what Christ had said in regard to the fruit to be born in the Christian tree. They do not discern that these entertainments are really Satan's banquets, prepared to keep the soul from accepting the call to the marriage supper of the Lamb. They, pre they prevent them from receiving the robe of character, which is the righteousness of Christ. They become, few, they become confused as to what is right for them as Christians. They become confused as to that which is right that Christians are to do. They do not want to be thought singular and naturally inclined to follow the example of others. Thus, they become under the influence of those who have never had a divine touch on heart or mind. In these exciting gatherings, carried away by the glamour and the passion of human influence, youth that have been carefully instructed to obey the law of God are led to form attachments to those whose education has been a mistake and whose religious experience has been a fraud. They sell themselves to a lifelong bondage. As long as they live, they must be hampered by their union with a cheap, superficial character. One who loves, who lives for display, but has, no, but has not the precious inward adorning of the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. When sickness and death shall come, those who have lived to please themselves merely, they find themselves, they have provided no oil in their vessels and their lamp, with their lamps, and they are utterly unfit, unfitted to close their life history. This has been, this will continue to be. So this is talking of a, of a Christian, Christians, Israelites, if you like. Israelites, and they are drawn in. And they see someone who looks educated, who looks like they're a Christian. But it's a fraud. And they enter into this lifelong bondage. There was a man who could have done some mighty strokes for God. His name is Samson. Samson. And you know the story of Samson, the lusts of the eyes. And what lashes did this taskmaster give Samson? This taskmaster, when Samson was, was there, he had to work in the brick kilns of Egypt. With the Philistines, he was there, they poked his eyes out. What a taskmaster, poke your eyes out. And that's what happens with the lust of the eyes. Christ says, if your eye offend you, what do you do? Pluck it out, but don't let the Philistines do it. Allow God to do it. Because the lust of the eyes is inside of us to engage in a relationship which God hasn't ordained. Because the character is a fraud, it's superficial, it's fake. And this is the snares of Satan upon the young people. To fall in love but they only wake up to see the damage of their fall. Is, after this bondage, Pharaoh had to command all the firstborn to be thrown in the river. And today, if the youth will follow the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and they have children, those children will end up in the river because of Pharaoh. Those taskmasters will come and take your children and wreck your children. Your children will be ruined. They'll be drowned in the waters of sin, all because you have been in this bondage. There is another taskmaster, and that is the taskmaster of amusements. Have you ever seen children amused with some toy? And they love the toy, and they both want it, and then what do they start doing to each other? They start hitting each other, and annoying each other, and they bashing each other, all for the amusement. I've seen more pain in amusement than pleasure. 
When do the riots happen in, in, in the cities at night? When they're working or when they're amusing themselves? When they're amusing themselves. Amusement causes problems because when we just want to indulge ourselves and someone else wants to indulge themselves, there becomes war and fighting. And little children, they can fight over a toy and hit each other. And they're, they're brothers and sisters. Don't they love each other? Well, no, because amusement has a taskmaster which will whip them. You can have the toy, but you've just bashed your sister. And it has a whip to it. All these whips. Appetite. The lust of the flesh. To indulge in a worldly diet, to indulge in the drugs or, or caffeine. Caffeine gives you a boost. Wow, I feel good. And then what is the whip of caffeine afterwards? Oh, I feel so bad. It's like a siren. Who likes to listen to sirens? You, you ever go into your room and play some music and it's just a siren? Up and down. It sings and it sinks. And that is what the diet is today. Energy and no energy. Energy and no energy. That is a taskmaster of Egypt. Work in the bricks. Look, you're building a great city. And then whip, whip, whip. To be filled with a sugar boost and then end up hypoglycemic. Oh, oh, now I need some more. And this is the addiction. This is the taskmaster. You can't get out of it. You're in bondage. I need another fix. I feel like I've been hit. I've got no energy left. And I wake up in the morning and, and there is three, three types of drugs that we take in our life. Stimulants and depressants and hallucinogens. So we start ourselves off and then we slow ourselves down. And then we start ourselves off and slow ourselves down. This is bondage. But one of the cruelest, one of the cruelest taskmasters I have ever seen is fashion. What a taskmaster. You have to look pretty. And so you look pretty. And you put your high heels on. And oh, my, my uh, calf muscles are sore at the end of the day. Oh, because you've had to wear these high heels because it's Egyptianly acceptable. And you put on all these garments that, that reveal your skin to the sun. And workers, when they take their clothes, shirts off and they're bare backed in the sun because it feels cool, but then they boil all night because they're burnt. What a, what a whip of a taskmaster. These are inside of us. These are the whips. And anybody that would want to come out of Egypt first must groan under these burdens. Because we can read in Exodus chapter 3 in verse 7 and 8. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. How beautiful is that? God knows our sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of Egypt, and to bring them up out of the hand unto a good land, and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto a place of all these people. The Lord will deliver you out of these things. To deliver you out of Egypt. Can you agree 